Hello. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for your information, this program is organized by Islamic Religious Council and Malaysia Custom of Perlis State Mufti Department and the Perlis Islamic Religious Department. All guests, please be seated. I am Muhammad Hafiz bin Kasmin from Islamic University College and also volunteer for One Center Malaysia Perlis uh, will be your MC today. Dear all, for your information today, event will be conduct in English only, no Malay. <coughs> Greetings to Dr. Zakir Naik, public orator and a scholar on comparative religion, Mr. Zamri Venot, Chief Operation Officer, One Center Malaysia Perlis, Sheikh Hussein Yi, Founder and President of Pertubuhan Al Khadim, and also International Da'i. And last but not least, Mr. Farik Naik, son of Dr. Zakir Naik, and also International Preacher Officers. Mr. Haji Ramli Juso, Chairman of Al Gufran Mosque, Perlis. Officers, lectures, honorable guests, and committee of uh, Masjid Al Gufran, and fellow guests. Praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have been graced by the chance to gather in this momentous event. Alhamdulillah, blessing and peace be upon our great Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his descendants, his companions, alhamdulillah, with his blessing and mercy, we can gather in this glorious ceremony comfortably and comfortably and full of grace. And together, we will enliven this event. To start for our evening tonight, I would like to invite Mr. Al Qari uh, Muhsinin bin Saharuddin bin Saharuddin uh, from Masjid uh, from At Taqwa Islamic Primary School uh, to recite the holy verse of Al Quran Al Karim with full respect. The events welcomes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir wajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim
تَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُعَدُونَ نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدنيا وفي الآخرة ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون نُزُلًا مِنْ غَفُورٍ رَّحِيمٍ وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِّمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين ولا تستوي الحسنة ولا السيئة ادفع بالتي هي أحسن فإذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوة كأنه ولي حميم وما يلقاها إلا الذين صبروا وما يلقاها إلا ذو حظ عظيم صدق الله العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته hello hello صدق الله العظيم thank you for the reading for the recitation the holy verse of al quran al karim early ladies and gentlemen let us reflect on the translation of the holy verses of Al-Qur'an Al-Karim that were read just before. <clears throat> Translation. Verse 30. Indeed, those who have said our Lord is Allah and then remind on a right course, the angel will descend upon them, saying, Do not fear and do not grieve, but receive good tidings of paradise which you were promised. 31. We, Yani Angel, were your allies in worldly life and are so in the hereafter, and you will have therein whatever your soul desire, and you will have therein whatever you request or wish. Verse 32. 
as accommodation from a Lord who is forgiving and merciful. Verse 33, and who is better in speech than one who invites to Allah and does rightness and says, indeed, I am of the Muslim. Verse 34, and not equal are the good deeds and the bad. Repel evil by the deed which is better. And thereupon, the one whom between you and him is enmity will become as though he was a devout friend. Verse 35. But none is granted is except those who are patient, and none is granted it except one having a great portion of good. Sadaqallahul Azim. Next. <coughs> I would like to read the background of our speaker for this evening and a little introduction of him. Our speaker for this evening, which is Mr. Farik Naik, is the son of the world famous orator in Islam and comparative religion, which is Dr. Zakir Naik. He has completed his A-levels, CIA, UK, at Islamic International School and Junior College, Mumbai. Alhamdulillah, Fariq became a Hafiz of the Quran at the age of 13 while studying at school. At the tender age of 8, while on da'wah trips with his father, Farik started giving short talks in English and Arabic in front of thousands of people in Chennai, Pune, Dubai, Italy, Trinidad, and other cities of the world. In 2003, at the age 9, he addressed over 50,000 people in Srinagar and a large audience in Hyderabad in 2006 at age 12. After his brief presentation on Peace TV, he has been invited to give talks on Islam in different parts of the world, including Saudi Arabia, UAE, Qatar, Kuwait, Bahrain, Italy, Indonesia, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, Maldives, Mauritius, Gambia, Trinidad, and other countries. Their travels have bonded his understanding for international that will work. Farik is also an accomplished sportsman, particularly in football, swimming, karate, and judo. He, he has won, won, he has won the school best sport boy trophy for five consecutive years. Alhamdulillah, he is also a black belt in taekwondo and karate. Along with formal worldly education, he aimed to master Arabic and specialize in Islamic knowledge. He hopes to, inshallah, follow in his father's footsteps and excel in Dakwa work. Farik was youngest speaker at 15 years old among the over 30 Islamic speakers that came from 15 different countries in one of the world's largest Islamic conference, the International Islamic Dawa Conference. Peace, the solution of huma humanity, held in November 2009 in Mumbai, India. Farid has completed his Arabic language diploma and is presently in his final stage of bachelor study in Sharia in Al Imam Muhammad ibn Saud Islamic University in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Farid is an inspiration for the youth being the youngest regular speaker in, on Peace TV. He appeared once a week in the program Teen Star. That's the introduction. Now, I would like to invite Mr. Farik Naik, son of the, Dr. Zakir Naik, and also international guy to deliver his speech on the topic Seven Under the Shade of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. With highly respect, the events welcome.
الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبعة يضلهم الله في ظله يوم لا ظل إلا ظله رب شهل صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي I welcome all the viewers watching us on the PCV network as well as the people watching us on the various social media platforms that is YouTube, Facebook, Twitter as well as the people watching us live on the Al Hidayah platform as well as the brothers and sisters I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh May the peace, mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of Almighty God be upon all of you the topic of this evening's talk of mine is seven under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. According to NASA, the sun is 149.6 million kilometers away from the earth. In terms of miles, it is 92.9 million miles away from the earth. This is the distance of the sun compared to the earth. This is the distance of the sun to the earth. Even if the sun is 0.1% closer or away from the earth, survival would not be possible. And because of the distance of the sun from the earth, we have the different seasons. In some parts of the world, it is extremely cold. For example, the North Pole. In some parts of the world, it is hot. For example, the countries that lie on the equator. And because of the distance of the sun from the earth, we have variations in the seasons. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, said, it is mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number 7, hadith number 2864. تُدْنَ الشَّمْسُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ مِنَ الْخَلْقِ The sun, it will be brought close to the creation on the day of resurrection, on the day of judgment. حَتَّى تَكُونُ مِنْهُمْ كَمِقْدَارِ مِيلِ Until it will be at the distance of one mile. فَيَكُونُ النَّاسِ عَلَى قَدْرِ أَعْمَالِهِمْ فِي الْعَرَقِ so the people, they will be submerged in their perspiration based upon their deeds. Some will be submerged, some will be in their perspiration, and their perspiration, it will reach up until their ankles. And some for whom the perspiration will reach up until their knees. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَكُونُ إِلَىٰ حَقْوَيْهِ And some for whom the perspiration will reach up until their waist. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يُلْجِمُهُ الْعَرَقُ الْجَامَنِ And some who will have the bridle of perspiration which will reach up until their nose and their mouth. قَالَ وَأَشَارَ الرَّسُولُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ بِيَدِهِ إِلَىٰ فِيهِ and our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him. He pointed with his hand to his mouth. This is the situation on the day of resurrection. This is the situation on the day of judgment. In the life of this world, we take so much precaution in order to protect ourselves from sunlight. Many parents, they tell their children not to go out in the sun not to remain under sunlight for a long duration of time because a person may get a sunstroke. How much precaution do we take? How much are we concerned of the day of resurrection? On that day when the sun, it will be brought close to the creation, not 92.9 million miles, but rather only one mile. People, they will feel the intense heat on this day of judgment. Unfortunately, we do not realize the importance of the day of judgment. Unfortunately, we are more concerned about the life of this world 
We are more concerned about the heat in the life of this world as compared to the heat on the day of resurrection. As compared to the heat on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. It will be a horrific day. People will be scattered. And there are a series of events that will happen on the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, Surah Al-Abbas, chapter number 80, verse, verses 34 to 42. يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ On that day a man, he will run away from his brother, from his own brother. وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ And his father and his mother. وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ And his spouse and his sons. لِكُلِّ مْرِئِمْ مِّنْهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ شَأْنٌ يُغْنِيهِ Each person will be concerned only about himself. وُجُوهٌ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ مُسْفِرَةٌ on that day, some faces will be beamed, laughing and rejoicing. While other faces, they will be like dust. They will be blackened. Such is the situation of those who reject faith and the people of inequity. So there are series of events that will happen on the day of resurrection. The sun, it will be brought close to the people. And there will be no shade except for the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, said, and we will be discussing this hadith, inshallah, in detail. And this hadith, it is mentioned in several books of hadith. It is mentioned no less than three times in Sahih al-Bukhari, and at least once in Sahih Muslim. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, said, it is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, volume number 1, hadith number 660, as well as Sahih al-Bukhari, volume number 2, hadith number 1423, as well as Sahih al-Bukhari, volume number 8, hadith number 3806, as well as Sahih Muslim, volume number 3, hadith number 1031. سَبَعَةٌ يُضِلُّهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ظِلِّهِ يَوْمَ لَا ظِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلُّهُ Seven people will be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On that day when there is no shade except for the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? In another narration it is mentioned that seven people will be shaded under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it refers to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On this very day of judgment, people will long for some sort of shelter, for some sort of shade. And these seven categories of people who will be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will be the blessed people. They will be the honored people. Now who are these seven categories of people? The first is Imamun Adil, that is a just leader. The second is Shabun Nasha'afi Ibadatillah, a young person who engages in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third is Rajulun Kalbuhu Mu'allakun fil Masajid, a person whose heart is attached to the Masajid. The fourth is Rajulun. رجلان تحابا في الله اجتمعا عليه وتفرق عليه The two people who love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they meet for this reason and they depart for this reason. The fifth is رجل دعته امرأة ذات منصب وجمال فقال إني أخاف الله A person who's called by a woman who's of good lineage and who's beautiful and he says i fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the sixth is rajulun tasaddaqa bi sadaqatin fa akhfaha hatta la ta'lamu shimalahu ma tunfiq yamina hatta la ta'lamu shimaluh ma tunfiq yamina a person who spends in the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he spends it in secret to the extent that his left hand does not know what his right hand has spent. And the seventh category of those people who will be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is 
رجل ذكر الله خاليا ففاضت عيناه a person who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in private and his eyes shed tears. Inshallah, in this talk, we will discuss all of these seven categories of people who will be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is not restricted only to these seven categories of people who will be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there are other people who can also be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, he is emphasizing and stressing upon these seven categories of people who will be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Furqan, chapter number 25, verses 63 to 71. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the qualities of the Ibadur Rahman, of the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And 13 qualities of the Ibadur Rahman are mentioned in these verses of Surah Al-Furqan. Now these 13 qualities are not the only qualities of the Ibadur Rahman. But there are other qualities also. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these verses of Surah Al-Furqan, He is stressing and emphasizing upon these 13 qualities of the Ibadur Rahman. In no way does it mean that these are the only qualities of the Ibadur Rahman. In no way does it mean that these are the only qualities of the servants of the Most Gracious. So we as human beings, we as believers should strive and struggle in order to be from among these seven categories of people who will be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we want to be from among these seven categories of people who will be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we should read the glorious Quran with understanding and read the authentic ahadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad. May peace and blessings be upon him. We should stick to the glorious Qur'an and to the authentic ahadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad. May peace and blessings be upon him. The first category of those people who will be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Imamun Adil. That is a just leader. Many translations, they translate this category that is Imamun Adil they translate it as a just ruler. But the appropriate translation is a just leader. Because the scholars, they say, that this category, it is not restricted only to a ruler. It does include a ruler. But it is not restricted only to a ruler and it includes everyone who has some authority over someone else. So it does include a ruler, but Imamun Adil, it is not restricted only to a ruler. But rather the appropriate translation is Imamun Adil, which means a just leader. And if we translate it as a just ruler, 99.9% .9 of the people, they will not be included in this hadith, in this category that is mentioned in this hadith, our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him but rather it is a just leader. And many people when they hear this hadith, most of the people, majority of the people, they think that they are not included in this category because they think that they are not a president of a country, they think they are not a prime minister of a country, they think that they are not a ruler. But rather, most of the people, in some or the other way, they fall into this category of Imamun Adil, that is a just leader. If they rule if they deal with justice and if they follow the glorious Quran and the authentic ahadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him so everyone who has a responsibility over someone else he can fall into this category of Imamun Adil that is a just leader some people may have a bigger responsibility some people may have a lesser responsibility but most of the people most of the Muslims, they will fall, they will fall into this category of Imamun Adil, that is a just leader. And it includes the Khalifa of the Muslimin. 
the person who is the caliph of the muslimin and he has the biggest responsibility and he has the highest authority as far as the islamic empire is concerned it can also include a king who is ruling a nation but he needs to rule with justice and according to the teachings of the glorious quran and the teachings of our of the beloved prophet muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him it can also include a prime minister of a country a president of a country but he needs to deal with justice he needs to follow the glorious quran and the authentic teachings of our beloved prophet muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him the khalifa needs to take care of his people the khalifa needs to deal with justice the same is the case with a prime minister or a president of a country he needs to deal with justice he needs to take care of his people he should give them their due rights he should provide them with the appropriate services that are required he should provide them with the medical aid with the health facilities and the other facilities that are required to the best of his capability it can also include a chief minister it can also include a member of the parliament who represents his constituency for his country it can also include the member of a legislative assembly who represents his constituency for his state it can also include an mlc the member of the legislative council who represents his constituency for his municipality but all of these people who have authority and who have leadership they should they should deal with justice and they should follow the glorious quran and the authentic teachings of our beloved prophet muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him it can also include a person who is a head of an islamic movement it can also include a person who is the head of an islamic organization for example a dawa organization for example a charitable organization it can also include a person who is the head of an educational institute for example a university a college a school he may be the rector of a university he may be the head of a department in the university he may be the head of the department of biology the head of the department of medicine the head of the department of engineering if it's an islamic university he may be the head of the department of an islamic faculty for example tafsir hadith fiqh etc it can also include the pers a person who is the head of an industry it can also include a person who is the head of a company or of a business he may have a million employees under him he may have 100000 employees under him he may have 1000 employees under him he may have a few employees for example five employees under him so a person may be a head of a company it may be a small scale company or business or it may be a large scale business or a company but he needs to take care of his employees he should give them their due rights he should pay their salary on time he should not delay the payment of their salary and he should not deal with them with injustice he should deal with justice with his employees and our beloved prophet muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him said it is mentioned in sahih al bukhari hadith number 2406 kullukum ra'in wa mas'ulun an ra'iyati that each person is a shepherd and he is responsible for his flock so each person is a shepherd each person is a guardian and he is responsible for what is in his custody so every person who has a responsibility over anyone else he should fulfill this responsibility unfortunately today we have the politicians who are more worried about their seat in this dunya as compared to securing their seat in the akhirah they are more worried about they are more worried 
about accumulating wealth and being rich in this world rather than being concerned about the afterlife. It is very rare to find a politician or a leader who follows the glorious Quran and authentic teachings of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him. Many a times we find the leaders, they make their sons, for example, a minister, just because he's their son. He may not be capable. Many a times when a budget is allocated for a particular project by the government, the politicians, they consume majority of this budget. For example, if a budget is allocated by the government for building roads or for building a hospital, the politicians and the people under them, they consume majority of this property. They consume majority of this wealth. So it is very important that we should be concerned about the Akhirah and we should give the afterlife more priority as compared to the life of this world. If the politicians, if the leaders, they follow the glorious Quran and authentic teachings of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, the world will be a better place to live in. We will find peace, justice and equality in the world. And we have the best example of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him. He was known for his justice and equality. And there are several incidences from the lifestyle of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, which clearly tell us and which clearly show us that our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, he was just and he was equal. There's a hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, that is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 3475, as well as in Sahih Muslim, hadith number 1688. A, a woman had robbed something. And the people, and she was from a noble lineage, she was from a noble clan. So the people of that clan, they want to intercede on her behalf in front of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him. So they approach Usama bin Zaid radiallahu an, and they request Usama bin Zaid, Usama bin Zaid radiallahu an, to intercede on the behalf of this woman in front of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him. And they approach our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him. Usama bin Zaid, he approaches our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, and he intercedes on behalf of this woman who was from a noble clan. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him. The color of his face, it changes. And during the khutbah, he addresses this issue and he says that there are certain people who want to intercede for a woman who's from a noble clan. They want to intercede on her behalf after she has robbed something. By Allah, if Fatima, my daughter, would have robbed, I would have chopped off her hands. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessing be upon him, he says that even if Fatima, radiallahu anha, if she would have robbed, our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would have chopped off her hands. This is the justice of Islam. How many leaders, how many politicians do we have today who would serve with justice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah, to, in Surah Al-Nisa chapter number 4, verse number 135, That, oh you who believe, stand up firmly for justice as a witness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if it be against your own self, even if it be, against your parents, even if it be against your relatives, even if it be against the rich or poor, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for everyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse, He's telling us to deal with justice, even if it be against our own self, even if it be against our parents, even if it be against our relatives, even if the person be a rich person or a poor person, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for everyone. Someone might think that why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about the poor people in this verse? How to deal with justice with a poor person? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse of the glorious Quran is telling us that we need to deal with justice even if the person is a poor person. For example, if a poor person has done some crime and if he comes in front of the judge, the judge may think, oh, he's a poor person, he does not have money, 
I should let him go. I should not deal with justice just because he's a poor person. If a poor person has done some crime, he should be dealt with justice even if he's a poor person. The appropriate punishment should be given to him. So in Islam, justice is served in all situations. Even if the person is a rich person or the person is a poor person. A similar message is repeated in the glorious Quran in Surah Al-Ma'idah chapter number 5 verse number 8. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kunu qawwameena lillahi shuhada'a bil qist. That all oh, you who believe stand up firmly for justice. Stand out firmly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and deal with justice. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is telling us that we need to stand firmly and we need to be just. We need to deal with justice in all situations. Whether it be a situation wherein we are benefited or whether we are not benefited. Many a times we see many people, they avoid dealing with justice if it, is, if it will harm them. Wherever they see there is benefit, then only they deal with justice. If they see that justice will cause them harm, so they do not deal with justice. But Islam stresses upon justice. We are the example of the four rightly guided caliphs. The Khulafa al-Rashidun. They were known for their justice and for their equality. We have the example of Umar radiallahu anhu. He was known for his justice and for his equality. Whenever Umar radiallahu anhu appointed any governor for a particular area, the wealth of the governor, it was calculated before he was appointed as a governor. And any wealth that he earned after this, during his tenure as a governor, when he left this position, this governor would have to return back all the money to the Baytul Mal. Because Umar radiallahu anhu, he feared that a governor may use his position in order to earn money. He may misuse this. There is no problem in earning money. But Umar radiallahu anhu, he took utmost precaution that no governor should use this position and this influence in order to acquire money, in order to accumulate wealth. Umar radiallahu an, he was known for his justice. A Jewish and a Muslim man, they had a dispute over a particular issue. And they come to Umar radiallahu an for justice. And Umar radiallahu an, he deals with justice and he gives judgment in favor of the Jew. The Jew, he's shocked and he is impressed with the justice of Umar radiallahu an. He thinks to himself that I being a Jew, I am served with justice under the Islamic rule. He is impressed with the justice of Islam. A person needs to deal with justice irrespective whether the person is a Muslim or a non-Muslim. Irrespective whether the person is rich or poor. Irrespective whether the person is black or white. Justice needs to be served in all situations. And all human beings are equal in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah Al-Hujurat chapter number 49 verse number 13 Ya ayyuhal nas inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila lita'arafu inna akramakum inda Allah yatqakum inna Allah alimun khabir O oh mankind we have created you from a single pair of a male and female and divided you into nations and tribes so that you may recognize each other not that you will despise each other and the most honored among you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you and Allah is all knowing well acquainted the criterion for judgment in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's not caste it's not color it's not wealth it's not gender but it is righteousness it is God consciousness it is taqwa it is piety so all human beings are equal in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what makes one human being superior to another human being it is his taqwa it is his God consciousness it is his piety so we should see to it that we deal with justice. We should not commit injustice. And the glorious Quran has stressed upon this. Several ahadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, have stressed, have stressed upon justice. 
The second category of the people who will be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Shabun nasha fi ibadatillah. A young person who engages in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, said, it is mentioned in at targhib wa tarheeb Igtanim khamsan qabla khams. That take advantage, take benefit of five before five. What are these five things? The first is shababu qabla haramik. That your youth before you get old. The second is sihhatuk qabla saqamik. That your health before you get sick. The third is ghinaka qabla faqrik. Your wealth before you get poor. The fourth is faraghuk, faraghuk qabla shughlik. Faraghak qabla shughli. That your free time before you get busy, before you get occupied. And the fifth is hayatuk qabla mawtik. Your life before you pass away. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has stressed upon these five things. The first is shababu qabla haramik. Your youth before you get old. Why has our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, stressed? upon this period wherein a person is young because when a person is young he's full of energy he's full of strength his desires are at its highest his temptations are at its highest and if this time he dedicates for the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he dedicates this time for the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most a person when he's old he is weak he may not be able to walk he does not have the maximum strength if he does ibadah inshallah he will be rewarded no doubt about it but the ibadah of a young person is far superior in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as compared to the ibadah of an old person. So we should see to that we dedicate our youth in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should see to that we dedicate our youth in ibadah. We should see to that we dedicate our youth in conveying the message of Islam to the non-Muslims, to those who are unaware of it. And we have several examples from the lifestyle of the Sahaba. We have the example of Ali radiallahu anhu. He embraced Islam at a very young age. And even though he was young, he was close to our beloved Prophet Muhammad. May peace and blessings be upon him. This did not deter him to acquire knowledge. To dedicate his life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To dedicate his life for the sake of Islam. We have the example of Anas radiallahu anhu. Anas bin Malik. He was a young Sahabi. And he narrated several ahadith. We have the example of Aisha radiallahu anha who narrated no less than 2,210 ahadith. Even though she was young, she acquired knowledge. She was an expert as far as, fara as, far as fara'id, as far as mirath, that is inheritance is concerned. Sahaba used to approach her and ask her regarding inheritance. We have the example of Zubair bin Awam, we have the example of Abdullah ibn Zubair, we have the example of Usama bin Zaid who was sent by our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessing be upon him, when he was very young, approximately 18 or 20 years of age. He was the head of an army. So we have several such examples of the Sahaba. We should learn from the examples of the Sahaba, even though they were young. It did not prevent them from acquiring knowledge. It did not prevent them from dedicating their life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of them, when they embraced Islam, they were thrown out of their houses. They had to give up all of their wealth. But yet, they preferred Islam over the life of this world. They knew the importance of Islam. They knew the importance of the afterlife. That's the reason they gave it preference as compared to the life of this world. We should learn from the example of the Sahaba. And there is no problem with someone having fun, with someone enjoying. But it should be halal enjoyment. It should be within the purviews of the Islamic Sharia. And a person, he should not 
having fun and enjoyment should not be his prime focus in life. A person can spend a few hours in a week in order to enjoy, in order to do exercise. Some people, they find it relieving. Some people, they find it as a sort of relaxation in order to do exercise. Some people, they find it as a sort of relaxation in order to, when they go out to walk or they go for a walk or they go along the corniche. But all the entertainment, all the fun, all the acts or actions of relaxation, it should be within the purview of the Islamic Sharia. Some people, they may spend, for example, an hour a day in order to play some sports, for example, football, basketball, volleyball, etc. There is no problem in it. Islam is not against fun and enjoyment. But a person should not keep his prime focus as fun and enjoyment in order to relax, in order to have some time of relaxation, there is no problem in it. But a prime focus, it should be in order to serve the deen. We should be concerned of the afterlife as compared to the life of this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He loves the ibadah of a young person who dedicates his youth in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us be from among the people who dedicate their youth in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even those people who have crossed this age, better late than never. We yet have time in order to do ibadah, in order to serve the deen, in order to be good and righteous human beings. The life of this world, it is only for a few years. But the home of the year after, it is everlasting and it is eternal. The third category of the people who will be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rajulun qalbuhu mu'allakun fil masajid a person whose heart is a person whose heart is attached to the masajid what does this mean imam nawawi rahimahullah may Allah have mercy on him he said ma'anahu al hubb al shadid that a person who has excessive love for the masjid وَمُلَازَمَتُهُ لِلْجَمَاعَةِ And he is the person who is regular as far as the obligatory prayer are concerned. But natural referring to the five obligatory prayer. And Imam Hafiz bin Hajar al-Thqalani رحمه الله may Allah have mercy on him in his commentary of Sahih al-Bukhari that is Fathul al-Bari he says وَظَاهِرُهُ أَنَّهُ مِنَ التَّعَلُّقِ that the apparent meaning of this is that it is attachment. As if it is compared to something that is attached in the masjid. Kalkindili Mathala. For example, a lantern. Isharatan ila. Dawam al mulazama Isharatan ila mulazamatihi biqalbihi Walau kana jasadu kharijan an As an indication that he continuously is attached to the masjid with his heart even if his heart is outside the masjid Isharatan ila mulazamatihi biqalbihi Walau kana jasadu kharijan As an indication to his attachment to the masjid with his heart, even if his body is outside. And a person who is attached to the masjid, it does not mean that 24-7 he is in the masjid physically. It does not mean that a person, he has to be in the masjid his entire time. What does it mean? It means that a person, he longs to go to the masjid. When he leaves the masjid, his heart is attached to the masjid. It is as if he has left his heart in the masjid. And he longs to go back to it. Even though physically he is outside the masjid, but his heart is attached to the masjid. He longs to go back to the masjid. And this person is the person who is regular as far as his five daily prayer are concerned. He offers the five daily prayer in the masjid. And he's regular as far as the five daily prayer are concerned. He offers these five daily prayer in congregation in the masjid. And he's the one who offers also 
the Sunnah al muakkada and the Sunnah Ghayr al muakkada And he's the one who offers and is regular as far as the Tahajjud prayer is concerned. Unfortunately, many of us, we go to the masjid and moment the salah is over, we just want to leave the masjid immediately. We are not attached to the masjid. Many a times when it is time for, for salah, we think, oh, it is time for Dhuhar salah. Oh, it is time for Asar salah. Now I have to offer salah. Now I have to go to the masjid. We think it as a burden. But this person who will be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the one who always longs to go to the masjid. Even when he is away from the masjid physically, his heart is attached to the masjid. He always longs and wishes to return back to the masjid. And he waits for the next salah. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, said it is mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number one, hadith number 251. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he tells the Sahaba that should I not inform you of something which will erase your sins, which will erase the sins and which will raise your ranks. So the Sahaba said, Indeed, O Prophet of Allah. So our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, said, Isbaagh al wudu is Isbaagh al wudu al al makari That to do wudu properly, to do wudu properly, when you find it difficult to do wudu. Wa kathratul khuta ila al masjid. And to take many steps to the masjid. That is, even if the masjid is far from your place, a person yet goes to the masjid. And to wait in from one salah until the next salah. So that is ribat. What does ribat mean? Ribat it refers to those people who are in the front lines in the battlefield when fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he's talking about these people who do wudu properly when it is difficult, who take many steps to the masjid, that is even if the masjid is far, they go to the masjid. And they are the ones who wait from one salah to the next salah. It is like those people who are in the front lines in the battlefield. What a great honor for the believers. Those people who are attached to the masjid. We should see to that we are attached to the masjid. And a masjid, it is not only a place of salah. It is a place where we can have Islamic activities. It is a place where we can have lectures. Like Alhamdulillah, we are having the lecture today. It is a place where we can have Islamic competitions. Wherein the youth can be called to the masjid. So a masjid is not only restricted to salah. There are various other Islamic activities can, that can take place in a masjid. So we should see to it that we are attached to the masjid. If we want to be from among those people who are shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should see to it that we are attached to the masjid. The fourth category of the people who will be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is are those two people Rajulani tahabba fillah ijtama alayh wa tafarraqa alayh the two people who love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they come together and they depart for this purpose what is this category of people referring to whom does it refer to it refers to a person having another friend and the purpose of this friendship is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter number 5, verse number 55. <speaking in Hebrew> that your friends are none but Allah and His Messenger, and those people who believe, and those people who establish prayer, and they are the, from the ones who bow down. So we should see to that we choose good friends. Do we have friends who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger? What is the purpose of our friendship? Many a times we keep a friend because he's rich, 
Many a times we keep a friend because he's influential. Many a times we keep a friend because he is, for example, a person who always jokes or who cracks nice jokes. What is the purpose of our friendship? We should see to that we choose friends who draw us closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who draw us closer towards the deen. Friendship is very important in Islam. If we do not have good and righteous friends, if we have friends who are involved in haram activities, there are high chances that we too will commit these haram acts. So this category is referring to those people who choose friends and the purpose of this friendship is because their friend draws them closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The purpose of this friendship is that this friend, he does Islamic things and he gets his other friend closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on the day of judgment, these people, they will be called by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aina al-mutahabuna bi jalali. Where are those people who used to love each other for my majesty, for my sake? الْيَوْمَ أُضِلُّهُمْ بِظِلِّي يَوْمَ لَا ظِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلُّ يَوْمَ لَا ظِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلِّ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will tell to these friends who loved each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that where are you? These friends will be called by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say that on this day I will shade you when there is no shade except for my shade. What a beautiful honor. Imagine the Lord of the universe, our creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will call us on this day. He will call these two friends and He will ask where are those people, those two friends who loved each other for my sake. What a great honor that the Lord of the universe, He will call us. Would we not like to be from among these people? So, this is the fourth category. The fifth category of the people who will be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is رَجُلٌ دَعَتْهُ إِمْرَأَةٌ ذَاتُ مَنْصِبٍ وَجَمَالٍ فَقَالَ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهِ A person who's called by a woman of great stature, a person who's called by a woman who is from a noble lineage and who's beautiful. But he says, I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, Surah Al Zina, chapter number 13, verse number 32. Zina. Do not come close to adultery, for it is an evil opening towards other evils. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in this verse of the glorious Quran, He is telling us that do not come close to adultery. Leave aside committing this major sin. It is a major sin. And this person who is called by a woman in order to commit this major sin, a woman who is beautiful and he knows that no one is watching him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this situation. He knows that his Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching him even though no one may be watching him in this situation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah Al-Nazi'at, chapter number 79. فَأَمَّا مَنْ طَغَى وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى As for the one who transgresses all bounds, وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا And he prefers the life of this dunya, the life of this world. فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى Then his abode, it will be hellfire. وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى And as for the one who fears the standing before his Lord, and he prevents himself from the hawa, from the desires, فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى His abode, it will be paradise. Those people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those people who control their desires in all situations, even if they are in private, these are 
the muttaqeen. These are the ones who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the people who will be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Would we not like to be among these people? Would we not like to be shaded by the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? On that day when there is no shade except for the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sixth category of the people who will be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rajulun tasaddaqa bi sadaqatin fa'akhfaha hatta la ta'lamu shimaluh ma tunfiq yameenuh A person who spends in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in secret, in private to the extent that his left hand does not know what his right hand has spent What does this mean? It is a figure of speech that this person he spends in secret Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran Surah Al-Baqarah chapter number 2 verse number 271 In tubudu mahi, That if you spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you disclose it so there is good in it In tubudu sadaqati mahi, wa in tukhfuha wa tu'tuha al-fuqara fahuwa khairun lakum But if you conceal it if you hide it and if you give it to the poor those who need it then it is better for you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will forgive your sins Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about those people who disclose and they give charity that is the general people but the higher level of taqwa the higher level of iman is when a person spends in secret when people are not watching him and he gives charity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He helps a poor person. He helps a needy person. In certain situations, a person may give wealth or may give charity in public. For example, if he is an, influ if he is an influential person, if he is a person who has a huge following, if he is a person who has people who would listen to him or who would follow his actions, and he knows that if he gives it, in front of people, people will be encouraged. His purpose is not to show off, but his purpose is to encourage other people. So in this situation, there is no problem. In fact, in this situation, it is better for him to give in public, to give charity in public. But generally, a person, it is better for him to give charity in secret. Because this is known by Allah subhanahu Ta'ala and other people they are not present in the situation and if he gives in secret so he's solely giving it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's not giving it in order to show people he's not giving it in order to show off so this kind of charity is superior in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the seventh and the last category of the people who will be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in this hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him is Rajulun A person who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in secret and his eyes shed tears he is a person who in secret he engages in the, in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who calls upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who cries in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who gets up in the last one third of the night and he calls upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, cries in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should see to that certain acts of worship, we do it in secret. At least certain acts of worship. So this person, he is a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who in secret, the stress is upon the word khaliyan, that is in private, in secret, he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we as Muslims, if we want to be from among these seven categories, we should see to it that we are good righteous Muslims. We should see to it that we offer the five daily prayer in congregation, in the masjid as far as the men are concerned. And we should see to that we offer the Sunnah al muakkada and the Sunnah Ghair al muakkada And we should be regular as far as the Tahajjud prayer, as far as the night prayer is concerned. We should give the obligatory charity that is the Zakah. If our wealth is more than, if our wealth is more than the Nisab level. That is more than 85 grams of gold. 
and besides this we should see to that we dedicate a percentage of our wealth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we should fast in the month of Ramadan which is compulsory and these people who are shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for example the young person he is the one who besides fasting in the month of Ramadan that is the obligatory fast he even fasts the voluntary fast for example fasting on the day of Arafah fasting on the day of Ashura fasting on the, the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah fasting the six days of Shawwal fasting on Mondays and Thursdays fasting during the Ayyamul Beed that is the 13th, 14th and 15th of every Islamic month and if the person he has the means to perform Hajj he's capable for performing Hajj he should see to it that he performs Hajj and we should see to it that we engage and we dedicate our life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we should see to it that we are involved in Dawah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran Surah Ali Imran chapter number 3 verse number 104 وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَائِكَ هُمْ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Let there arise out of you a band of people calling towards what is good, enjoining what is right and forbidding what is wrong. They are the ones to attain felicity. Today in our community we have full-time doctors, full-time lawyers, full-time engineers. How many full-time da'is do we have? And those people who are full-time da'is, they are the ones who will attain felicity. We should see to it that we dedicate our life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may He make us from among all of these seven categories of people who will be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On that day when there is no shade except for the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I would like to end my talk with a quotation from the glorious Quran from Surah Al-An'am chapter number 6 verse number 162. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Say indeed, my prayer, my sacrifice, my life and my death are all for Allah, the sustainer of the worlds. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Thank you to Mr. Farid Knight for the speech and insight. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I would like to give a soft reminder that this program is organized by the Islamic Religious Council and Malay Custom of Perlis through uh, One Center Malaysia Perlis and Perlis State Mufti Department and the Perlis Islamic Religious Department. Ladies and gentlemen, for your information after Mr. Farid Naik's speech, the event has provided two microphones for the question and answer session. Ladies and gentlemen, in this session, we would like the following ruling to be observed. First, question asked must be on the topic itself, which is seven under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any question outside of the topic will not be entertained. Second, Whatever question you have, post directly. Do not give a mini lecture. If you want to give a mini lecture, maybe you can organize your own program and we, can, and we will come to your program. The th third, you may ask one question at a time, but you may have more than one question that you need to do is to go back into the queue, behind the queue, then wait for the next for your next turn. There are two microphones located in this mosque for your convenience to ask the question. Mic one for, for the brothers and mic two for the sisters. We will uh, take question from both microphones. Before you post your question, please state your name and your profession. Therefore, the speaker can give you a relevant answer to your question. You know that not to waste time to people to come to the mic one by one. I will request you to have a queue if you have any question. Just come forward to the queue. Can we have a question from the brother's mic?
Yes. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, I'm I'm Ahmad Baiki. Um, as you stated from hadis and hadis, sahaba who rojulain uh, who are sahaba because of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will be under the shade of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So I want to ask. Uh, whether finding a friend who is more iman ihsan uh, are in, <coughs> is important is Lord, more important brother, can you move a little bit away from the mic i cannot hear you clearly okay. can you move a little bit behind here please and speak a little bit slowly please yeah okay, okay. um so i want to ask whether finding a friend who is more ihsan iman uh important or being a friend who uh, who is more Iman and listen to others, brothers Muslim, I, I, uh, is more important. Brother, can you repeat your question? I didn't understand your question. You said that is it more important a person who has Iman? And what is the second part of the question? Oh. Uh, I want to ask uh, whether finding a friend uh, who is more Iman and Isan, Islam, okay. I important. Uh, more important than being a friend uh, with uh, I iman and Islam to other brothers Muslim okay. is more important. The brothers asked a question that is it more important to have a friend who has high iman, high ihsan, etc., or is it important to have high iman, high ihsan with the other friend? As far as the seven categories of people that are mentioned in this hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, which we have discussed. It is not restricted only to these seven categories, as I said in my lecture. So, if a person has high iman, high taqwa, high ihsan, but natural, he will have high iman, high ihsan with himself, as well as while dealing with others. Because ihsan, it is the highest level of faith and it includes worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also dealing with others in a good way and our beloved prophet Muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him he was asked wherein a person who was dressed in complete white who came to our beloved prophet Muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him and this hadith is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari and he asked our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, regarding Islam, what is Islam? And our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said the five pillars. And then he asked, what is Iman? And our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told this person regarding Iman. And then he asked, what is Ihsan? And our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, that to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as though you can see him. And if you cannot achieve this, then at least think that he is keeping an eye on you. So this is the highest level of faith. And the highest level of faith, but natural, it includes all the aspects of Islam. That is as far as personal ibadah is concerned, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and as far as dealing with others is concerned. So there are two important aspects. The first is hukukullah, that is the rights of Allah. And the second is hukuk al admiyin that is the rights of human beings. Both of these are equally, both of these are important. In fact, if you have done wrong to someone on the day of judgment, until you don't forgive this person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive you. So when you are choosing a friend, you should see to it that this friend, he is a righteous Muslim. He is a person who practices Islam. He is a person who draws you closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is very important that we choose such friends. And at the same time, you should also be good with this person. Because it comes in the category of hukuk al admiyin That is the rights of other human beings. So it is very important that we choose a friend who will draw us closer towards the religion of Islam, who will draw us closer towards the deen. So I hope that answers your question. Can we have a question from the sisters? Ada sesiapa nak bertanyakan soalan berkenaan topik tujuh golongan di bawah naungan Allah?
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, Alhamdulillah, MashaAllah, very beautiful topic tonight And also people from Mopolis um, I have a question uh, regarding the topics The question is, with the seven whom Allah sheds with his sheds On the resur resurrection day, will then be brought to account The sister asked a question that the seven people who will be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will they be brought to account? As far as these people being brought to account, certain people among these, they may be exempted from the accountability, whereas others, they will be brought to account. So it depends upon the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this day of resurrection. But there is no hadith which says that these seven categories of people, they will be exempted from the accountability. So certain people on the day of judgment based upon the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will be exempted from accountability and some people they will have their accountability go easy. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he make us from among those people who enter paradise bi ghayri hisab, without accountability. As we know, our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he has stressed upon a hadith that there will be certain categories of, there will be certain people who will enter Jannah without accountability, those who do not do ruqya. So again, this hadith is talking about this category of people. And there are other ahadiths also of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him. So some among these, they will enter Jannah without accountability and some they will be held accountable on the day of resurrection. But in general, each and every human being will be held accountable on the day of resurrection, on the day of judgment for his deeds. Certain people, they will receive the intercession of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him. And because of this intercession, they will be removed from hell and they will enter into Jannah, into paradise. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he grant us in the intercession of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him and may he admit us into the gardens of paradise, into Jannatul Firdaus. Ameen. So I hope that answers your question. Can we have a question from the brothers? So Alam Dari Padadala. warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Israel. So after the lecture, I believe um, it's hard for me to say that which category that, that, that I, I can belong to. And I believe that I also, maybe I can try to push myself, try to put in myself into the third category or maybe the third six categories which are part attached to the most and uh, the sixth category is uh, I'm not mistaken, spend for, for Allah so however <clears throat> the big question is and I believe the big challenge is to have this authentic ikhlas to do this thing so what should I do to have this kind of authentic ikhlas to do everything it is because sorry authentic Authentic? Ikhlas, the sincerity okay, to do this. Okay. The brother asked a question that as I discussed Thanks. in my talk regarding seven categories of people who will be shared under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how to have ikhlas? Our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, said it is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari. In fact, the first hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari. إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِ إِمَّا نَوَى That the deeds are based upon their intentions. So whatever actions we do, we should have ikhlas and niya. What does ikhlas and niya mean? It means that whenever we are doing any good deed, we should solely do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it should be free of riya. It should be free of pride. Now how do we attain al-ikhlas? How do we achieve this al-ikhlas? The first and the foremost thing is that we should stick to the glorious Quran and the authentic teachings of our beloved Prophet Muhammad. May peace and blessings be upon Read the glorious Quran along with understanding. So there are two aspects as far as reading the glorious Quran is concerned. There is 
Tadakkur Quran, which is superficial reading of the glorious Quran, and there is Tadabbur Quran, which is in depth understanding of the glorious Quran. So we should read the glorious Quran. If we know Arabic as a language, this is the best. If we do not know Arabic as a language, then we should try to read the translation of the glorious Quran in the language we understand the best. So this is the first and the foremost step in order to achieve al-ikhlas and in order to be a good righteous human being. And at the same time, we as believers should see to it that every action that we do, it should be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second important thing is that whenever we are doing any action, we should keep this action free from riya, free from pride. So for example, if we are delivering a lecture or for example, if we are reciting the glorious Quran in front of people, we should purify our intention. We should see to it that we do this only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is free from pride and free from show off. This is very important. And at the same time, we should be involved in Islamic activities. And as I've stressed upon the seven categories, we should see to it that we keep good friends. And we can try to be from among all these seven categories. Even a person, if he's old, yet he can do ibadah. There is no age restriction as far as ibadah is concerned. So he can do ibadah, but as you have said in your question that ikhlas and niyyah is very important and we are all aware of it, but the way we achieve is first is read the glorious Quran with understanding and implement upon the teachings of the glorious Quran. And the second is that whatever action we do, it should be free from riya and it should be free from pride. So whenever we are doing any act of worship, any act of ibadah, we should always purify our intention. Before, for example, we are delivering a speech or before we are offering salah, we should wait for a few minutes before we start the ibadah and we should think to ourselves, why am I doing this ibadah? Am I doing it in order to show off? Am I, am I doing it to gain popularity? Am I doing it just because my parents are telling me to do it? If a person he contemplates and he thinks about this before doing any act of worship. So inshallah, when he does this act of, act of worship, he will have ikhlas and niya, that is the purity of the intention. And at the same time, we should see too that we read the seerah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, and even the sahaba, they dedicated their life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They had true ikhlas. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he, if he wanted, he could have been the richest man in the world. But he chose the home of the hereafter as compared to the life of this world. And we as believers should always think of the afterlife as compared to the life of this world. And we should always be connected and close to good Islamic pe people, good Islamic friends. If our circle is good and Islamic, inshallah, we will have ikhlas and niyyah that is the right and correct intention and we'll do our ibadah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I hope that answers your question. Do we have a question from the sisters? Ada apa masalah? In this soal? From the brothers? Any question? No. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, my name is Tori. I'm am, I'm a student. I want to ask: um, Do we need to fulfill all the seven criteria to be headed under the shade of Allah? The brothers asked a good question that do we need to be among all of the seven categories in order to be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
these are seven categories that we have discussed in this lecture in this talk and it is not compulsory that a person if he wants to be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has to be among all of these seven categories even if he's in any even if he's among one of these seven categories then inshallah he will be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but an important aspect is that if a person wants to be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he should follow the glorious Quran and follow the authentic ahadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him and in addition he should do all of the things that are fard and abstain from all of the things that are haram that are prohibited if he follows these two aspects inshallah he will be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he may be in one category he may fall under one category he may fall under two categories he may fall under three categories he may fall under all the categories and we as believers should try to fall under all of these categories try to be a just leader and try to be a person who is engaged in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a young person all the categories that I have discussed in this talk so I hope that answers your question do we have last question from the sister or the brother With the end of the last question just now, will we end the session of uh, Mr. Farik Naik? Mr. Farik Naik, please be seated. We can take one last question if anyone has a question. Maybe the brothers or the sisters before we end the program. You, you do. Oh. Aliko, as you mentioned, for that. Can you lower your mic a little bit and remove your face mask, yeah, please? Huh? You can lower the mic a little bit. Lower, lower it, lower it down. Okay. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. So. As to mention before that one of the types of people that are in the shape of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment and I was just wondering that uh, the group of a man and a woman love each other because uh, for the sake of Allah is that referring to marriage or unmarried I mean what I mean about unmarried is actually a man instructs a woman to the path of Allah can you explain or give me yeah some explain on that The brother asked a question that in my lecture I discovered, I discussed regarding one category which talks about Rajulani Tahabba Fillah, Ijtama'a Alayh wa Tafarraqa Alayh. Wherein two people they love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they come together for this reason and they depart for this reason. Now, this category it is basically referring to friends. When a person chooses another friend, he chooses a friend who will draw him closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He chooses a friend on the basis of Islam. He chooses a friend because this friend is Islamic. So this is basically referring to choosing a friend who is Islamic. But natural if a person he is good to his wife and if he's Islamic with his wife, if he's kind with his wife, he will be rewarded. And if he is kind with his wife he also can be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as I have said in my talk that it is not restricted only to these seven categories of people but this category of two people loving each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is talking about friendship but if a person is good to his wife if he's kind to his wife as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran in Surah An-Nisa chapter number 4 verse number 19 that treat your woman with a footing of kindness and equity and treat your woman with, woman with a footing of kindness and equity so if a husband and wife if they lead their life in an Islamic way and if they encourage each other to get closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah they will be rewarded and we hope 
that inshallah they will also be shaded under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is not only restricted to these seven people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mercy it is never restricted and even his shade it is never restricted he is the lord of the universe he is our creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so how can his shade be restricted but in this hadith our beloved prophet Muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him he is emphasizing on these seven categories of people in general if we want to be under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we want to enter the gardens of paradise we should do all the things that are fard and abstain from all the things that are haram and if we want higher levels of Jannah if we want to enter Jannah for those we should see to it that in addition to this we try to do almost all the things that are mustahab and try to abstain from most of the things that are makru in Islam so I hope that answers your question with this we will inshallah conclude the question answer session wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen with the end of the last question, then the end of the session of Q&A with Mr. Farik Naik. I'm now request uh, Mr. Farik Naik to go to the uh, seat that had been provided. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I would like to give a soft reminder that this program is organized by Islamic Religious Council and Malay Custom of Perlist through One Center Malaysia Perlist, the Perlist State Mufti Department and the Perlist Islamic Religious Department. Next, I would like to invite the Chairman of Masjid Al Gufran, Haji Ramli, and Deputy of Chairman Masjid Al Gufran, Shukri, Mr. Shukri Abdul Rashid, to be on stage for giving a souvenir to the speakers.